Hi, Simon. I'm Hi. Sarah from The Coming. Nice to meet Lovely you. So tell us a bit about The Phantom of the Open. If people are thinking of coming to watch it, what can they expect? Wow. Um, well, it's um, an underdog movie. We all love an underdog <laughs> in Britain, in the world. My God. But um, Morris is the ultimate underdog. He's a working class hero that you've probably never heard of. Um, he was a crane driver from Barrow who just fell in love with golf and thought this is the one for me, entered the British Open, shot the worst round in history, but that didn't stop him trying again. Uh, and it's about, I suppose, not just taking the cards you dealt with in life and just going, I can do whatever I want to do. And he, he, he instilled that in everyone around him, including you know his family mainly. And so really it's a film about um, a family and about, about a dreamer and someone who refused to be put into a box. And you were saying earlier, you, <laughs> you know, when you've got kind of, you know, the family there, you've got an autobiography, how do you even go about putting this into a narrative and, and, and making a script ready for making into a film? Yeah, it was difficult. Because uh, um, essentially it's a film about a guy who's bad at something, which films aren't usually about. <laughs> so it was a challenge to... Um, um, make a film that had sort of that was satisfying, but but when just the more we dug into Morris's life and what he was all about and what he did and um, and sort of redefined success, I suppose, like what is success in life, and 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 that was the key to sort of making a, uh, a satisfying narrative of, of the whole thing, and really just getting closer to the true story, like the closer we got to what actually happened to him the better the film script got, so it was in a way easier in that sense. And you've got Craig Roberts at the helm, obviously he's actor but turned director, but also you know a bit of a who's who in terms of British talent with Sally, with Mark, with Reese. So what was it like having these people work on your film? Oh, amazing. I mean, it's a dream cast. You know, everyone, well, we asked Mark, Sally and Reese, and they said yes, and it was so <laughs> It was quite easy in terms of um, we didn't have a very hugely rigorous process, and thankfully they like the script. Like it's a uh, Craig and myself do acting as well as you know directs, he directs and I write, so we sort of know what actors like doing. You know that's quite important. So actors want to come in and, and have fun, make an impression, do fun things they haven't done before, and I think they all sort of enjoyed themselves in the show, so that's great. And I've, I've heard that Mark ha is quite particular in, in his working method, but also always phenomenal on set. Uh, yeah, he's, he's thorough, you know, he's a, he's a writer himself, and he's a great writer, and, and um, so he gave me a lot of thoughts on, on the script, and then, but when it comes to the acting, we just left him to it. I mean, he did all his research, he went to Barrow, and he hung out with the family, like he's really close with, with the family. And um, he threw himself into it. You know, he stayed in character quite a lot through the film as well, which is quite odd. Uh, not, you know, to a crazy extent. Just he, he just kept the vibe going of, of where he was at with Morris. And so me having lived with Morris, you know, metaphorically for so long, it's quite strange to see that. But he was amazing, yeah. And what do you hope people take away from watching it? It feels like we need a bit of this optimism that the film has uh, right now. Yeah, um, you know, film can be a great escape from what's happening in the world and, and um, I hope that people feel uplifted and feel like they can achieve whatever they want to achieve, whether themselves or, or in, in the wider world or, you know, it's, it's a film about hope and about dreams and going for them even if they fail. I'm frazzled because I've been nearly finished three months of shooting ghosts, which is, for, which is my other job. <laughs> so, and that's filming, which is much more exhausting than writing. Well, I, my dad is a greenkeeper um, at a golf club in the northeast, and all the juniors, I remember the juniors heard about him, this would have been in the 80s, so he was a bit of a folk hero, but to us, the juniors got treated really badly by the normal members, you know, they were usually quite snooty, and we were like the scum. And so Morris, I remember, was our sort of figure that was like one of us, you know. Um, and then I took golf quite seriously. I was sort of nearly turned professional. And then, but I wasn't quite good enough. I mean, it was better than Morris, but. Um, 
And then when I got into acting and comedy instead of writing, um, I'd forgotten about him. And in 2007, I read that he died and read his obituary and heard a little bit more about him. And so I went, oh, that's that guy, you know, that we used to talk about. Um, and he sounded like a really interesting, funny character. So I did a bit of more research, found out a bit more about him, and, then it, and it really just sprang from that. No, it was, it was hugely important to, um, to us to get them on board. Because it's a true story, and um, uh, when we first went to visit um, Morris's son, Gina James, to research for the film, they were just so helpful and, I mean, crazy, you know, they were, uh, <laughs> had a night that I'll never forget in Barrow, because um, they're just, you know, out of control. Oh, they were then. <clears throat> um, and uh, they gave us, I said, oh, have you got anything on, you know, your dad that will give us more insight into his personality, what he, what he was thinking about when he was doing the open, and they said, wow, we've got this, his autobiography. An unpublished 500 page handwritten autobiography that they just gave to us and, and they went just make it you know a good film and um, so we were so grateful to them for that and gave us a few other bits you know and obviously lots of information about Morris and and um, they were great fun sadly Jean died you know a few years ago but James is in the film and James's daughter is acting the film. she's a really good actress and she's in the film as well um, she has a speaking part uh, James couldn't handle more than a word, but uh, <laughs> but Bianca's in it. It was Morris's granddaughter, and it was just important to get them. You know, and at every stage, I said, "Is this okay? Is this? Are you happy with this? Is this? You know?" Um, and it's just something that was important to us, and because we, we, we knew when the film came out, we didn't want them to go, "Oh, it didn't happen like that, or that wasn't what." Well. So that's what I guess. Uh, I didn't really know who. I wanted to be honest. I wasn't quite sure about who could do it, but I think Craig first said Mark, and, um, and I just thought, well, we'll never get him, but he'd be perfect because he's a great actor, but he's also not um, known for comedy, or he, and, and we wanted it to be a fully rounded character and, 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 and not just a figure of fun. The comedian might have done something with it like that, but um, so yeah, he was he he was uh, um, wasn't expecting to get him, but it was a nice surprise to get him, and then he was brilliant. Well, Morris Flitkoff uh, was a crane driver, 46-year-old crane driver from Barrow and Furness. He, he worked in the shipyard, and one day he got a colour TV and uh, saw golf for the first time, and just fell in love with the sport, and then. Um, you know, after a short time, declared himself good enough to play in the British Open, which is always, I think it's almost like, uh, I always think it's like the X Factor, you know, those people who sing in their rooms and go, I think, I think I'm pretty good at this. And he, because he was very working class and from a place where the, he didn't know any golfers, he, he presumes that his standard was good enough to play in the British Open. He wasn't joking. He, and he went for it and, and he did very, very badly. Um, but he didn't let it, um, uh, it didn't let it stop him, you know. He was determined to prove that he could do it and that he was that he was good enough. And so he kept going. So it's about it's a film about determination. It's about not giving up any dreams. And it's about not um, not sort of sitting with what cards are dealt to you. Know, so going, I, I want more out of life. And I think we all feel like that sometimes. Yeah. Well, Mark Mark was was brilliant in that he uh, took Morris very seriously, you know, and it's why we were very lucky to get him. Because he, he, he was serious in what he was doing. It, it was very important to me, is that I wouldn't have made the film if, if it was, I wouldn't have written it, or even been interested if he was just a joker and he was just taking the kids so he was, um, you know, just joking around. He wasn't, he was deadly serious and he thought he was good enough and he thought he could get there one day. And um, even when faced with the fact that he wasn't good enough, he, he still thought he could get there. So Mark really got that. He, he got that and he went for it. But, but having said that, he's got, no one ever knew deep down what was going on with Morris, you know. Um, and so now and again, you know, what Mark did was, was bring flashes of playfulness and 
because Morris was fun. He wasn't like, you know, he, he was also a sort of um, someone who believed in dreams, you know, someone who was a dreamer. Uh, and, and so really, the, he, he took a very complicated character and he made him real in a way that I, I, I hoped would happen. I never thought it would, but um, he did it. Craig just, um, uh, I, I saw him in Submarine, obviously, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's that kid, he's like 15, isn't he? And then they went, oh, no, he's 30 now. <laughs> and um, I went to see his film, Eternal Beauty, with Sally Hawkins. Um, and I just loved his, um, his passion, his sort of playfulness. Uh, that film was actually about quite serious issues, but was still really funny and was in unexpected ways. And it was very beautiful as well, very visually striking. I think he, he's amazing in that he doesn't compromise. Like, he's a young director who got, this film's probably his biggest budget film, and he did things like he said, it's got to be shot on real film, which he does these days. And then he went, if you don't, I'll, I'm not interested. And I was like, wow, who's this guy? Um, he's got an encyclopedic knowledge of cinema. He's like a sort of Welsh Tarantino in that way. He probably won't like me saying that, or maybe he would. But he loves film, he loves, there isn't a film I've mentioned that he hasn't seen. Um, and that's what I love about him.